Welcome to episode seven of Prosper by Design, where real people bring real questions about how to live, create, communicate, and make money in alignment with their human design. I'm your host, Chris Prochaska. I help entrepreneurs, corporate teams, and speakers see how they're uniquely designed to profit with purpose in a way that's natural and authentic to their design, both as an individual leader and part as part of a company or organization. You see, everything is energy, and we communicate energetically first and foremost. Your human design is a map of your energy. It shows how you think, experience emotions, interact with others, make decisions, live your purpose, share your ideas, market yourself, and even make money. Today, we're looking at profiting with purpose through your design. So let's dive into today's content. Hello and welcome back. So after recording six episodes as the Living by Design podcast, I realized that most of the conversations I've been having with my guests are looking at how they experience prosperity, prosperity and profit through their design. And prosperity, while it does have to do with money and financial abundance for sure, it really means so much more than that because you can have a business that's quote unquote successful financially but it drains the life out of you. Or you can have fame and fortune, but your relationships and or health is crap. So while I'll be focusing in these next episodes with my guests on business and making money in alignment with their design, we're also going to be discussing energy management, energy intelligence, communication, and um, emotional intelligence, and really how to prosper in all areas of your life and work. Which brings us to today's episode topic, which is profiting with purpose. I'm really excited to share this information with you. Um, you know, today we're going to talk about the three secrets to align your personal human design with your profitable business model. And this is really so you can stop effing around already, huh? And prosper simply by being you and doing what you were born to do. Um, yeah, such a huge topic and so absolutely essential and something that is really near and dear to my heart and also to my design. So this is uh, the Align Your Design model, my business here and what I do with my clients. And really, I just want to overview this because I think it's so powerful when we really start to see um, the, the synergy and the um, intersection between an individual's design, their business design, and the team design. And a team can also be a large organization. So we're really looking at all the different ways that humans come together and their designs interact and all the different layers and levels that we can do an analysis on design. And we're also really talking about making money with purpose, profiting by purpose, but also increasing productivity, which all leads to profitability um, and that sense of prosperity. So I've spent the last seven plus years using human design for myself personally and professionally. I've guided entrepreneurs in how to build businesses that are in alignment with their unique design and how to take what fits and dump the rest because Every single one of us is so unique and there's no one size fits all model, no matter how many coaches try to solve that. My clients know what works for them and what doesn't. They know where to focus their energy, their time and their resources and how to use the programs that they've purchased in ways that are in alignment with their design. You know, marketing and staying true to one's design is a special focus and passion of mine as is showing my clients how they're designed to make money and helping them to unlock the profit potential in their design. So I've also worked with CEOs to help them be better leaders, to communicate more effectively and honor the unique designs of the people on their teams. I've helped groups improve communication, decision-making and productivity by understanding where the energetic gaps are in the business and how to create higher functioning teams. I've also helped TEDx speakers, leaders and visionaries who have a provocative message or who aren't really sure how to share their message in a powerful way, do just that. So I've helped speakers create talks and more importantly, prepare and deliver talks in a way that's in, a, that's in alignment with their design. And all of these things contribute to purpose 
and greater productivity and profitability. Because when we really are in alignment with our design, that's when money flows. So let's look at um, what does this mean? You know, how do we get into alignment with our design? Now, most of us want to see the way to reach a goal, like getting in alignment with your design or making money, doing what we love. And when we can't see the way or we can't see ourselves clearly, we try to do it the way everyone else does or give up altogether. And I've seen and experienced all different versions of that in my business and in my own life. However, when we change the way we see versus focusing on seeing the way, everything changes. So what do I mean by that? Well, changing the way we see means changing the way, for sure, we see ourselves and our business model. So many of my clients share with me that they've had a great idea or something that won't leave them alone, and yet they're just not sure they can trust this and follow their heart and their intuition, their own inner knowing. Even, and perhaps especially, my clients who are creatives, intuitives, and who are incredible at guiding others often feel lost when it comes to themselves. And this blindness to ourselves is part of being an outer authority for others, or it's the part of the genius and the gifts that you offer, the wisdom that you offer for others, that we offer others. But it comes from our shadows and our distractions. So no wonder we can't see it. It's like our greatest gift, and yet we can't even see it. So we can't see ourselves clearly. We're either blind to it or we judge the hell out of ourselves for these gifts and and the challenges. And so we second guess and doubt ourselves or feel insecure about what we really offer. And most of us, most of us humans, doubt the value of what we offer because that's actually part of the design. It's one of the shadows of the design. So you're in good company if that's that's you. Because somehow we think, it's not enough. What we offer is not enough or we're not good enough. And whether we're consciously aware of that or not, it really does drive most of humanity. And that also gets in the way, but that doesn't have to. These things don't have to get in the way. And that's what I love working on with my clients is really helping them to change the way they see themselves, to change the way they experience themselves and to see themselves in a totally different way. So today, we're going to talk about three secrets. And the three secrets are, why, number one, uh, is why systems fail and the system you really need to know, like, and trust in order to succeed. Secret number two is time management is BS. There's something else you need to do instead. I'm going to share that with you. And secret number three is fractals, holograms, and physics. Oh, my. This is all about your quantum energetic profit map. And uh, yeah, this is so fun. I just, I love, I love sharing this information. So here again is a quick picture of uh, my human design, what it looks like. And um, I'm going to assume that you know what human design is if you're listening. And if you're not sure, if you're just joining this podcast series, then check out episode two, where I do a brief overview of human design. It will be called the Living by Design podcast, and it'll be episode two. It'll be linked in today's show notes, so check that out, all right? But here is secret number one. Coming really close, because this one's going to kind of blow your mind. It really blew my mind. There is no system. That's the secret. There's no system. Actually, there's no outside system. So what do I mean by that? Our identity, our identity is found in our design, our map, the map of our design. So our identity is a complex intersection between who we think we are, who we want to be, who we think we should or need to be, and who we really are. The design points us to who we really are, which includes who we want to be. See, we are the system we've been looking for. There is no outside system. We are the system. And human design just shows you what your system is. That's how it works. You 
me, we, we are the system we've been looking for. It's easier to be in alignment with who you truly are versus who you think you are. And it takes some time to decondition ourselves from other people's energy and the habits we build based on who we think we are or who we are supposed to be. But it can be done. And that's, again, what I love helping my clients do because it is, it, I mean, it is really, really cool. When you really get this, it's like, oh my God. And billions of dollars are spent every year in the self-help industry and the business coaching industry and in marketing and all kinds of stuff to figure out, you know, here's a system for success. And really the system for success is you and it's in your design. So who are you? You know, most people don't know who they are. So they try to create goals, especially around making money and being prosperous that seem like if they did them or accomplish them, they'd be happy. And as I said before, your human design is a map of your identity. And not only can you create a goal, especially a goal around making money based on who you want to become or what you want to create, you can align it with who you are. And that's what helps you to realize and express that goal. So let's look at it in terms of launching a business or a product or a service. See, when we're looking at a person's design and we're seeing what their strengths and gifts are and not, and I'm really not just validating or confirming that they're there, although that is a big part of the work I do, but really helping the person to own those gifts and use them in the world. Because as I said before, it's easier to be what you already are than to try and be someone you're not. And the highest version of you is already in your design you're already fully capable of being the highest expression of your design because your design doesn't change over your lifetime. The map of it doesn't change, but your expression of it changes. And that has a lot to do with who you want to be. And if you really look at the highest expression of your design, it is often who you really want to be. But there's a lot of conflict between the outer world telling us who we need to be and who we think we need to be versus who we really are. And that's the place where most people get stuck. Okay. So our design, um, our design contains both our genetic inheritance and our subconscious patterns. So unlike any other system out there, we can actually map and see and work with this genetic and unconscious material. It's believed that this makes up about 50% of your identity and is previously thought to be something that can't be changed, this genetic and, and these subconscious patterns. This, or the genetic inheritance is about 50%. And we, and we just inherit it. We can't change it. That's the belief. But I actually believe that we can change this through understanding it and through the expression of it. As I said before, we're not going to change the design, but we can change how we express it in the world. Now, all some of this information I'm sharing with you came from a a training I did called Goal Setting by Design. And um, I'm probably going to actually do another podcast around that because it's such a big issue for people, is setting goals and really being able to create goals that are in alignment with them. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a couple of minutes. But um, if you think about it, um, this is a really powerful piece of understanding. Um, how much we can actually change who we are. So if you're, one of the things that we need to look at is, um, as I said before, we can actually see and map and work with that genetic and unconscious material. And we can see what capacities a person has as well as the challenges and limitations and work with them versus trying to fix them. This is such a big part of it. And we can create what we're here to create versus setting goals we think will bring happiness based on other people's and opinions and standards. And this really brings us to knowing whether or not our goals are even ours. 
So one of the questions you want to ask yourself is, is it yours? Are these your goals? And how do you reach your goal or your version of financial and purposeful success will be unique to you, even if it's the same end result you and others are shooting for? So if your goal is not aligned with you, you'll never get there. You'll always get precisely what you need, but this can be a huge gap between what you think you want or supposed to have versus what or how you're designed to receive it and or attain it. And the energetic conditioning we receive from others around us and the collective is extremely potent. Discernment is absolutely essential. And that uh, there's a visualization set, uh, session called the Clarity Visualization Session. It's on my website. It'll be on the podcast page. It's a great tool to discern um, whether or not your goals and what you want to create in the next 12 months are even yours. So I really recommend that you take a few moments to check in with yourself and see are the goals that you have, whether they're financial goals or health goals or uh, business goals or speaking goals, whatever it is, again, that would make you feel more prosperous. Are they even yours? Because if they're not, that might be one of the reasons why you're experiencing, um, you know, not reaching those goals. Okay. So let's look at uh, secret number two. And secret number two is that time management is basically BS. <laughs> um, it, it is. I mean, that's, that's the thing. See, we can witness time through the natural expression of it, through the sun rising in the morning, setting in the evening, the cycles of the moon, our rotation around the sun, etc. And we humans put an infinite number of projections and constructs on time. There's not enough time, there's too much, we're too late, we're too early, we're too young, we're too old. All of this comes from the mind, not from our presence and awareness right in the moment. We often tell ourselves, we'll start or start over tomorrow. But now is when the power to change is present. Now is when the power to change is present, not tomorrow. And with my clients, we often are looking at and uncovering and removing those faulty constructs around time. And instead, looking at their experience of the now, of the present moment, in terms of their design and how they can use both their strengths and their shadows to live powerfully in the moment. You see, time has an intimate connection with both our identity, and this is a huge part of it, right? We're talking about who are you? If you're the system, your identity, your relationship to time is intricately entwined in that. So it has an intimate connection with our identity and our ability to, quote, manifest or succeed at reaching our goals. Because our design is going to give us clues along the way, whether we're on track or off track energetically. And this is what truly matters, not the mind constructs and the beliefs about time. In fact, I often tell my clients, forget time management, focus on energy management instead, because there isn't enough time in the world to do things that suck your energy. There really isn't. So forget time management, focus on energy management instead. So what or who sucks your energy? What or who feeds your energy? It indicates your flow state. And overriding this awareness is what causes us to try to manage time. That, and thinking we have some say in the big picture of, quote, divine timing, right? So when you're in alignment with your design, when you're in alignment with the flow and the gifts of your design, I should say, Time is irrelevant. See, you're in the flow and you trust that all is unfolding as it should, as it actually is, without judgment of yourself or others. And what needs to get done gets done right on time. And when it doesn't, it doesn't. And what's even more remarkable is that if you really go back, and again, if you're whether you're an individual or you work in a with others 
or you work on projects or you work part, as a part of a team or a partnership, I really, as I say this, I want you to go back and I want you to think about situations. If you go back and look at those times when something didn't go according to plan or the time frame that you decided or that your business decided or your team or your manager, or whatever, or the group decided that it didn't go according to that plan or that decided upon time frame. most of the time it actually ended up working out for the best. And you couldn't maybe have even come up with how it could have worked out so well based on your plans. So again, if you really start to look at managing your energy and understand that time Yes, there's natural cycles of time and there's that quote unquote divine timing, right? Or there's also the, the, you know, we do have clock time and all of that, but a lot of time is a construct and time truly does expand or contract based on your energy levels and your awareness and your ability to be present. So if you learn to manage energy, then you can master time. And here's the other thing about energy management. Energy leaks are ultimately profit leaks. And energy leaks can be faulty beliefs. They can be fears, miscommunication. Um, think about sales conversations, whether it's you or your team. And you know, having everybody do it all the same way, now there's some, you know, there, that can be helpful. But if you really get it. Like if one person's energy works a little bit differently than another person's, even on the same team, if that individual works with their energy a little bit more intentionally, they're going to have more powerful sales conversations than if they try to do it like everyone else. And this goes for you as well. So whether it's you or your team, this energy and of, of course the example of sales is a big one for every business and every business grapples with it. So here's the problem. Part of the problem with energy is that, um, you know, there's this destination that we have. Again, when we have a goal, a goal of profitability, a goal of being prosperous, a goal of reaching something that will have us experience those things. They're off, it's often outside of ourselves. That destination is outside of ourselves. And so mentally, emotionally, and physically, we're constantly comparing where we are with where we want to be, and it can suck our energy. Or we're comparing who we are with others, and that can suck our energy too. So if we put that destination outside of ourselves from there, it's always just out of reach. And it's that constantly, com that constant comparison that is sucking our energy. And I see this on all levels, uh, whether I'm looking at an organization or I'm looking at an individual in their business. So anytime that you're in that comparison trap, comparing yourself to where you want to be, um, comparing yourself to others and or comparing how you do it with uh, how other people get things done. All of those things are energy leaks and they cause a lot of miscommunication and, um, and just a lot of wasted time and energy, frankly. So from here, let's look at the last secret, which is all about fractals, holograms, and physics. Oh my, this is your quantum energy profit map. So um, this is really similar in a lot of ways to secret number one, which is you are the system. And your energy is communicating your alignment or misalignment with your system or through your system all the time. See, when you get that there's no one else in the world like you, and you start to trust not only yourself and your goals, your dreams, your visions, things start to fall into place. So what do I mean by fractals? You're probably like, what the heck? So hologram, we live in a holographic universe. We live in a universe that is sort of like, a, almost like a house of mirrors. There's layers and layers and patterns in our 
um, in our universe. And fractals, which these three images right here on the screen are, in, are examples of fractals in, the, in nature. So they're repeating patterns in nature. And we can also see them in mathematics and other ways uh, uh, and other means. So natu in the organic world and in the non-organic world, if you will. So how does this relate to human design? Well, part of your human design is determined by quantum physics, specifically neutrinos. And neutrinos make up the mass of the universe, that which we can see and that which we can't see. And these neutrinos imprint you at your birth. This is how we get the chart. This is how we get this human design chart. And um, it, it imprints you with a specific energetic pattern that is unique to you. This pattern contains fractals or patterns that are similar to the designs of others. And they also contain quote unquote puzzle pieces, if you will, that provide missing links and information, wisdom, and insight that others require as well. So your ideal clients and customers are part, part of your fractal. And this fractal is mapped in your human design. So here we have a, on the upper left, we have a computer simulated fractal, which is a repeating pattern. And then we have, uh, again, here's my human design chart, just using that one as, as an example. Um, and in it, in, in all of this information, regardless of how much you know about human design or not, there, is, um, there are patterns and there's information that can map our unique fractal and just bringing the two together here. So a lot of what I talk about, I, I talk about marketing by design, which could technically just be called fractal marketing <laughs> and, um, and really helping people to market to their unique fractal. See, there's really no one just like you and your quantum energetic profit map shows us this. There's no one just like you, therefore there is no competition. There is no competition. And when you really get that, that's a, another place where you get to build up your own energy. You stop leaking it out. You stop worrying. You stop trying to create your products and services tr to beat out some sort of competition that actually doesn't really exist. And I'm telling you, when you really get this, you, there may be some of you who are like, yeah, but I, I, you know, there's tons of people out there that do human design. There are tons of people out there that make shoes. There's tons of people out there that do coaching, consulting, that make products, that other clothing. I mean, just think about whatever. There's athletes. Just think of any lawyers, accountants, doctors, right? And every single one of, of us has our own fractal line and our own pattern and the people that we're here to serve and the people that will love our stuff. And there's just really no competition. And that means you can relax into being uniquely you. Because when you be you fully, that's how your ideal people can find you. And not only that, when you're being you fully, you serve them in a way that you're designed to do. They benefit and you get paid, hopefully well, if you're, if you're pricing yourself correctly, you get paid well for offering something that's totally unique and it's just way easier all around. All right. So some people ask me, well, what about teams and corporations? And if you're an employee versus an entrepreneur, you know, it really isn't any different. Um, you know, however, a partnership, a team, like a small team and a whole organization have a somewhat different design, yet you as an individual fit in there with your, your unique energy skills and gifts. So larger organizations, even partnerships um, and teams, small teams, have their own unique energetic design 
but it's made up of the individual designs. And we can map how well a team is functioning. We can also map how well the whole organization is functioning and where there are gaps or energy leaks. So remember what I just said about energy management versus time management? It really starts to apply here. So think about how much money and time is spent each year by companies trying to manage time. Is it helping? I don't think it's having the kind of impact leaders and managers hope it will have because it, it, there, there's every year we get more and more information about managing time, trying to control time, trying to, uh, and I haven't met anybody who's been able to manage it yet. So again, whether you're a solopreneur, you're working for someone else, or you're part of a team, each individual and the team and slash organization itself has a unique energetic design that we can map right down to the specific gifts and challenges and we can increase productivity through design, which ultimately increases both purpose because people are doing work that they're designed to do in a way that's in alignment with their purpose. And we can increase profit because obviously if people are happy doing what they're doing and they're productively managing their energy and doing what they need to do, ultimately that does come down to the bottom line and increase profits. So let's look at your quantum energetic pro profit map. So in the, the, there's two layers of work that I do. So one is as a career and business professional, um, human design, uh, career and business professional, I do an analysis of someone's design. And then as a profit potential professional, um, I can also look deeper at another piece, another uh, aspect or aspects of the design to show someone exactly how they're going to profit. What is, what are they here to do? Um, and this, uh, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about what's involved in both of those here in just a minute. But if we really look at um, your profit map, it shows us how, what, who, where, why, and when. So how is how are you here to serve and contribute your gifts and your genius to others? And what is what are the open signs that draw people into your business and it leads them to your how that I just mentioned? Your who or the who are you here to serve? It's your target market. It's your ideal client. It's that ideal client avatar. The where is where you experience fulfillment and being on track. And where does your experience fit in to what you do and who you serve and how you do it? And your why is why you do what you do. It's, it's your purpose and it's in the design. And I'm going to give you an example of that here in just a minute with a case study. And when is all about when do you take action and how do you trust yourself? So this is, these are the pieces that we look at in depth in your profit map, but we also, and it's a proprietary formula in your design. So it's not just your shadows and distractions or what we call the white functions or centers. There are many layers to it. You know, I finished this training over six months ago at the time of this recording um, and my certification um, in the profit potential work. But true to my 5-1 public role, which is all about being a practical marketer and an, uh, a detailed authority, I needed to experiment and practice and work with myself and a few of my clients to make sure this information really works and how it lands. And frankly, I'm pretty blown away because this is what we can cover, all of this stuff and what I struggled with for years. And now I no longer question it. So let me share with you some of the other pieces that go into your, that energetic profit map. So again, what are your strengths? And this is so you know exactly what gifts you're bringing to the world and your clients and how to trust them. What are your challenges? This is so you can identify when you're getting pulled off track and realign with your strengths quickly. Remember, this is all about energy management and using your energy wisely. How do you best make decisions? And this is 
so you know where to invest your precious time, money, and energy every day. And how does your energy flow best? This is how, so you can identify quickly where you're leaking energy and what builds your energy so you can stay in flow more of the time. Who are you here to work with? As I mentioned earlier, yes, it's in your design. Your ideal client's characteristics match many of your own, and you're going to know how to speak to them so they recognize you as well. What's your purpose? As I mentioned earlier, this is going to help you see what you're here to do, what you offer, and your ultimate why. You also see why there's no competition for what you offer. What business model is suited best for you? Is it retreats? Is it one-on-one -on -one clients? Is it leveraged group programs? Is it speaking? Um, you know, if, you're, if you have an organization, is it one product, many products? How will you out roll those products out? How will you build the model, the teams to work together? You're going to learn what suits you and your energy flow best and know how to choose what works for you. Do you work best solo, in partnership, or as part of a team or large organization? What do you need to know about how you work with others? And if you're solo, who to hire on your team that will fill in your gaps, that will help you be more productive? And again, we can map this on the larger organization and uh, teams as well. You may have people on your team, this is a note to managers, who are very independent and you're like, God, why can't I see they're just not a team player? Well, it could be part of their design and you can learn how to work with them and they can learn how to be most productive, both inside and outside of the team. So how can you market yourself and your work in a way that feels great and yields the most bang for your buck and your time and your energy output? See, not all marketing works for everyone. And when you do this work, you learn what works for you specifically. There's no more guessing or trying the flavor of the month marketing programs. And this leads us right into social media. Should you be using it or is it a distraction? And if you're designed to use it, you're going to learn how to yield better results. And finally, your fears and beliefs, which ones hold you back? You're going to see how they're a part of your design and how to work with them because they have great value when you know how to recognize it. So this is just some of the information that we look at in your energetic profit map. And um, it's just, it is, it is mind blowing really what I'm seeing. I'm really seeing that most of the, my clients in the last six months are exactly the ones I'm designed to serve. Most of my clients are struggling with control consciously or unconsciously in some way. They want to control how people see them or they feel out of control when it comes to marketing or selling or sharing their message. They feel also or experience, again, whether they're conscious of it or not, a deep insecurity about whether or not they can trust themselves and what they know. All my clients are deeply intuitive. In fact, many of them do some form of intuitive work with their own clients, or, or if they're a leader or manager, they're also very intuitive, whether or not they even recognize it in themselves. And they're guiding and others and doing incredible work at a deep spiritual and intuitive level. They often speak about intuition or write about it. I even helped two people in the last six months develop TED Talks regarding intuition, one in business and one in the field of medicine. And yet, with this incredible gift, with this incredible depth of knowledge, they still doubt themselves. They get sucked into the energetic patterns and beliefs that they can't trust themselves or what they know for themselves and apply it. And this insecurity runs deep. It pulls them off track. They wonder why their marketing doesn't seem to land sometimes. And they often have tons of ideas, lots of content, tons of content and expertise, but they don't know how to communicate that with others or what to focus on in order to really make the difference they came to make and to make the kind of money that they want to make. In corporate settings, I help leaders communicate more effectively and manage their own energy because the leaders and the managers set the tone for the whole organization. 
I'm also able to diagnose energy leaks in all departments in an organization, especially where communication breaks down, and guide teams to be more productive and profitable overall. Now, this is all in my design. In addition to my clinical experience and the training I have as a business and career and profit potential coach and consultant. And I share this with you because you, the listener, also have very specific ways in which you work and share your gifts. So it's both a process of getting the map and the aspects that I just described, you know, a couple minutes ago, but then following it and trusting it at deeper and deeper levels and letting it work for you. Just getting out of the way, stop blocking the progress. Because remember, remember what I said in, in the beginning of this, it's all about changing the way you see. So much of the time what I'm doing is not major radical shifts with my clients, it's slight tweaks that allow them to see themselves more clearly. All right, so let's look at another quick example here. So this is one of my recent clients. Uh, she's a transformational coach and a healer, and she has a lot of tools in her toolbox. She's been clearing beliefs and working on her mindset and her energy for years. Yet she was feeling frustrated because her marketing wasn't landing, and she was feeling frustrated because she also hated the traditional coaching healing business model, and she felt real constricted by it. She really wanted to do it a different way, but it wasn't sure it was quote unquote okay to do that. She hired me because like many of my clients, whether they're consciously aware of it or not, she wanted clarity and she wanted permission to follow her own intuitive hit about what worked for her and what, her, what brings her joy and satisfaction. But again, she doubted herself. She doubted her knowing and she didn't know her design fully either. Um, so she had been trying to reconcile her creative and intuitive urges with a model that just didn't work for her. And she felt she had to choose the model or herself. And this had her feeling really stuck. And I'm wondering if you can relate in some way to that. And what she really wanted to do and is now pursuing is to write her novels, which have a transformational and healing storyline and do more performance-based work. See, speaking, performing, and getting into character to, to deliver her witty, funny, piercing humor and healing insights. She has several characters she dresses as who can deliver truths in a way that's both transformational, entertaining, and just like a smack upside the head that are, just make it so that the people who hear them receive them at a different level. Now, when we meet, we didn't do her full profit potential map. We really only looked at a few things, but right away, you're going to see something I just think is so fun. Her life theme or her incarnation cross is the left angle cross of masks. And just get this for a minute. She is quite literally designed to play many different roles in her life in service to others often without them consciously knowing that she's offering transformation and not to become too attached to any one of these roles that she plays. She is here to wear different masks and express herself in many different ways. And this is what I tell people. Our design does us, not the other way around. And so much of the time, I'm simply validating and helping my clients identify what aspects of their design are truly theirs, their gifts and their genius, and what is other people's crap and their energy and the distractions and the constructs. And, the, and you know, this is how you're supposed to do it. This is the right way to do it. This is the rule. This is the model that works, blah, 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 blah. And, all, and when people get caught up in that, that's where we leak energy, remember? And What's so cool is that when you really get who you are, you tell a story that's most congruent with you. And when energy is congruent, that's when money flows. That's when it's easier to, it's just easier to be you. Okay, so this is so fun. After our session, this is, I think is the best part of the whole story. After our session, my client emailed me to let me know that after we hung up, she recalled that she was born on the evening of carnival in her hometown in Germany, a carnival where everyone dressed up and wore masks and costumes. 
And she also sent me a couple delightful videos of her dressed as her funny characters offering insights and humor in her own unique way. <laughs> right from the get-go, the moment of her, her birth, she was born to wear different masks and to be doing her work, her genius, her transformational work in the world in a way that only she can do it. So being profitable is about being free, freeing your energy up to simply be you. That's what I call a prosperous identity. And each and every one of us has it. You have your own unique prosperous identity. So do I. So does every single person listening to this and every single person who's not listening to this. All right, so let's recap what we covered today. So number secret number one, you are the system. Secret number two is all about managing your energy, not time. And secret number three is that you have a unique fractal with people who are waiting for you. You were literally born for this. And again, you may be a person that works in a large organization or on a team. This doesn't just mean, you know, solopreneurs or individuals, okay? So if you're curious about your fractal or your own quantum profit design, then check it out. Like uh, on the show notes page, there's more information. You can also go to my website, chrisprochaska.com forward slash offerings. Um, and this is such powerful work. I love it. It is literally what I am designed to do. I am designed to make people money and to help people to see how they're designed to make money, show it to them and give them the tools and the resources and the insights to help them be that in the world. So thank you so much for being with me today on this episode of Prosper by Design. And I can't wait to share with you the upcoming episodes with my guests looking at their profit design, as well as some of the other trainings that we'll do around goal setting, around corporate design, and what it looks like to work in a larger organization, and um, many, many other topics as well. So thanks again, and I look forward to seeing you in another episode. Take care. Thank you so much for joining us in this episode of Prosper by Design. Head over to chrisprochaska.com and check out the resources I have for you to expand your energy intelligence, boost your creative potential, and profit with purpose, all in alignment with your design. Remember to choose goals that are worthy of you and your natural energetic design. It's a hell of a lot more fun to live and make money that way than trying to be someone you're not. You've got a genius that can only come through you. Wouldn't now be a good time to share it? I'll see you in the next show. And don't forget to subscribe so that you never miss an episode. Until next time, take care.